Hello and welcome to the X-Files Revisited and we are on to the season finale of season one and that is the Erlenmeyer Flask. Now, Brian, did I say that right? And more importantly, is this, a, <laughs> is this a well-known and respected episode? This is an incredibly well-known and incredibly well-respected episode, yeah. I think if you ask any X-Files fan, their top five for season one, I think this is pretty much going to appear in most people's top five. Um, so, yeah. Well, let's just get started. Lots to talk about here, yeah? Mm, yeah. So, instantly, <clears throat> production values are through the roof because we open up to a car chase, <laughs> which is actually, I thought, pretty exciting. Although, it is a neat a selection of boxes that are stacked to the side of one of the streets that the cars just happened to hit. <laughs> Other than that, it's Sweden, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it it really well shot, really well shot. Um, I, I I do, yeah. I feel like they've they've got a bit more money to play with here, but it's yes. like they they could have half assed it. They could have just had you know two cars kind of having a little bit of a thing going on and then pulling over as the cops get out. But no, they they really want to shoot for the sky with this. They like the oh. opening shot is basically these two cars going over these huge hills and and smashing onto the floor and Mm -hmm. yeah really good pursuit really good uh action Mm -hmm. sequence to to open this episode up and get us really fired up it's very cinematic and i think it's Mm. i mean the streets are empty it's kind of like a a dilapidated warehouse building as well some of the chase but the choice of shots the amount of various cuts that there are in the sequences obviously shows that they spent a lot of money and a lot of time actually making this short sequence as exciting as they possibly can and I think mm. it works tremendously well. Yeah. Now when they finally corner the car, a man gets out and uh, he gets chased by the police, he gets caught trying to climb over a fence, he fights back, eventually he gets shot, he makes it to the top of a kind of short pier and uh, falls into the water. I mean, the mm. policeman goes to the top to see where um, the body is. He finds green blood at the top of it. Mm. So, I'm in straight away. It's high energy, <laughs> it's kinetic, it's mysterious. It is all, what the hell is going on here? And yeah. I am hooked, like most of the best episodes do. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it just, like I say, as, as, a, as a bit of a junkie of action cinema... This really floats my boat because it's just a really good action scene. Basically, to, you know, o- open up an episode with a really good action scene, it, it gets my adrenaline going straight away, and I want to, I want to know what's going on. What is this all about? Why, why are the police so vehemently pursuing this guy? Um, <clears throat> and what the hell's the green blood about? And why, why yeah. won't, why won't a taser gun take him down? Why won't a bullet stop him? Why is he? How has he managed to just nail? four coppers in, in one or three or however many it was. Uh, so, yeah, really good opening. Mm-hmm. So then we, we cut to Mulder sleeping on the couch as Journey to the Centre of the Earth is playing in the TV <laughs> and Deep Throat calls him yeah. and tells him to turn on Channel 8 News and the, the kind of news reports are focusing on the aftermath of this police chase. Yeah. So again, we've got Deep Throat uh, instigated early into the start of this episode. Now, is this the first time we've seen him in a, f- a few episodes, isn't it, Brian? It, it's it's been a while. I think. Is it? Is it, it since may, maybe since, since he walked into Yeah, the, yeah, it yeah. is. Since because he walked off into the smoke, and that was it. It's the last we saw yes. of him. So <clears> the <throat> last we saw of Deep Throat, he was quite open about being very duplicitous. Mm, yeah. <laughs> if you can say such a thing. <clears throat> so again, we're, we're we're not too sure of his intentions generally, but um, I suppose that'll play in later on in the episode. Mm. So, Mulder tapes the the news report and he starts going through it, printing off uh, stills, and you have Scully who is just pretty much questioning everything, and quite rightly so, because like we said, the last time she had a run in with Deep Throat, everything that she was told was pretty much a lie, and he was being manipulated. So she is on the question, everything rant, yeah, um, I, I, I kind of, I kind of on her, on her side a little bit with this one. Yeah, mm-hmm. spe- especially given, like we like we said, what what we learnt from Deep Throat the last time we saw him, 
the fact that he openly admitted to lying to Mulder, um, yeah, it kind it kind of makes you question Mulder's uh, I don't know, eagerness to jump straight back into that frying pan of of just of blindly following whatever leads this guy gives to him. Mm-hmm. Usually when you get burnt, you're a bit more tentative to, to do mm. the same thing again. When Mulder yeah. seems to have no, uh, no no wariness about him whatsoever, he's just both feet straight in yet again. Well, you're talking about a so guy I'm, who has a poster on his door, that's, that's on his wall that says, I want to believe. That's that's his mentality, isn't it? He's so desperate to believe yeah. that he'll, he'll keep making the same mistakes. Well, um, so Mulder and Scully go to the crime scene. And they question the officer in charge. And Mulder's asking where the body is. And they've had no recovered it in 24 hours, is it, I think he says? Mm-hmm, something like that, yeah. Yeah. So, Mulder and Scully decide to go and look at the rental car. And uh, Mulder discovers that it's not the same car because there's a sticker on the window of the still that he took a picture of, of his videotape, and the car that they're looking at is quite clearly doesn't have that sticker. Mm-hmm, yeah. So, again, it's... It's, it's, it's a big mystery because this is obviously a, a crime scene evidence and it's been played about with, stolen, replaced, whatever you want to say it. So it gives that grandeur scheme that the government are in city cahoots with somebody or they're working yeah. behind the scenes again. Either way, somebody is t- trying to cover something up. Yes, somebody with a lot of clout. Hmm. So the the symbol on the car is... It's, 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 I can't remember what Scully calls it, but it's used by doctors. So yes, it, it points to this guy being a doctor, and uh, and and we get we get Danny back. Uh, you know, we, the, we never get to see this character, but he he's someone that Mulder phones from time to time for help with various things. All right, yeah. So I, okay, I never clocked that. Yeah, I, I've pointed that out in a previous episode. Uh, I think it was an earlier one where. Basically, Mulder will pick up the phone and he'll say, "Yeah, Danny, can you do me this or do me that?" And so he basically asks Danny to run a plate for him, and it's the the plate of the uh, of the car, the 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 proper car, the one that he got mm-hmm. in his image with the doctor's symbol on it. it. Turns out it belongs to an uptight workaholic, Doctor Baruby. Who yes. essentially tells them to piss off? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, he's the kind of man that doesn't notice that his car's been missing for a few days. Mm. Um, he is so wrapped up in his work, and, and, and you, don't, you don't feel like he's lying about that. I, no, I, I, I never felt like he was lying about not realizing his car had been missing. I just felt like, oh, this is a guy that is so caught up in his work right now that that he literally can't see what's going on around him. Mm-hmm. Yep, a hundred percent agree. So uh, Mulder says they should question the housekeeper because she was the last person with the car. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scully says no, and it's at the point of of ludicrous, ludicrous what he's doing. Um, he doesn't know who Deep Throat is. Scully says he's toying with you. She's quite adamant. She's very forthright. She's very articulate. She gets the point across, and I think Mulder's a bit taken aback by it. Mm. And, and and I'm totally on her side here because absolutely she's she's saying what really we're all thinking, which is Mulder, you need to go to Deep Throat and you need to have words with this guy because he comes up, throws out these scraps of information, and you go running off like some lapduck, and it's like, well, actually, mm-hmm. you could very well be doing his work for him. So wake up. Yeah, so, so this seem, this seems to have an effect on Mulder because the next scene we see, he's not questioning the housekeeper. He's, he's kind of going back to his his digs, mm. his house, wherever it is, and that's where Deep Throat appears to him, mm. you know, and, and and tells him not to give up on this one. This is the one that's it's what he's been looking for. And again, he's still extremely vague yeah. with any information. He's, he's, he's irritating. Not even dangling a carrot. He's really irritating, actually, in this scene. I yeah. I. I I found Deep Throat in the this scene to be really annoying because he's exactly what Scully is describing. Um, he's doing the exact thing that she's telling Mulder to be wary of, um, and and it does. It, it it kind of it kind of irritates me. I, I do want to give mm-hmm. him a bit of a slap in this scene. 
Yeah, I mean, he's just had a fight with Scully about Deep Throat being vague and not giving any answers, and then he meets with Deep Throat, who gives <laughs> no answers and is yeah. vague, and that seems to win him back round again. It's, it seems almost kind of flimsy, but but we'll we'll go with it. It's fine. Yeah, so Doctor Baruby is working away when someone approaches him, and it's the man who was in the news report that we didn't mention earlier on, mm. Doctor Sakai. Uh, yes. uh, sorry, yeah, they're, they're looking. He's looking for Doctor Sakai. That's the uh... yeah, and, and then we get the sounds of a struggle, mm. yeah. and we jump straight onto the crime scene. Uh, where where Doctor uh, Sakara was last seen, and they calls off the search. And just as the boat pulls away, wouldn't you believe it? Somebody surfaces out of the water. Mm. It's like it's like he's been waiting underwater for the past two days until these people leave so he can just come up uh, which again, intriguing who is this guy uh-huh. and just how pruned does his fingers <laughs> um, yeah so Mulder and Scully are at Dr Bruby's lab and uh, there is a chance that he may have committed suicide although Mulder theorises that it is definitely murder mm. most foul <laughs> um, he was, and they find out he was working with the human genome project and Mulder just puts his hand into this thing and pulls out a beaker of <laughs> let's say light brown liquid <laughs> <laughs> I mean there must have been lots of things to choose but this is the one that he's put his hand on mm-hmm. and he says to um, Skelly to find out what that is mm. and, well, and the, again well, the, re- the reason he does that is because underneath that bottle there's a label that says purity control all oh, right, okay. I, I mm. don't think I, I caught that. <clears throat> um, and he gives it to Scully, and again for the second episode in the trot, Scully cracks a joke. Yeah. yeah. If this um, is Monkey P, Mulder, you're on your own. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's, it's quite good. It's good to see her. So you, you, when the, I meant to say this in the last episode, but when they're having a when she role reversals like that, you have a kind of sense that she's enjoying it. She's throwing back the way he is to mm. her. Yeah. You know, it doesn't feel like she's just been given a joke to say, even things out like by the scriptwriters. It feels as if she's actually playing a mind game with Mulder mm. and showing him what it's like when he does it to her all the time. And and in, in the best episodes as well, Scully gets to not only do these things, where she, these moments where she shows her humorous side, but she gets these moments of real strength as well. Like <clears throat> a few moments ago, like I say, when she called Mulder out on his nonsense with Deep Throat, you know, and she mm-hmm. she did it in a really powerful way. She didn't hold back. And then she, you know, a few moments later, she's cracking a joke. And it also shows the strength there of, of, of the trust between Mulder and Scully, the fact that, mm-hmm. you know, what, what she did with Mulder, the way she challenged him on, on Deep Throat, he, he, he could have been a bit sour about that with her for, for yeah. a few days, you know, he could have been sulking about it. But there's a respect there, there's a trust. There's actually Scully keeping him on the straight and narrow. So Mulder appreciated the fact that she did actually come out and say that. And then the next time we see them together, which is here, they're, they're back to usual, you know, they're able to crack jokes with each other. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um... So, Scully goes away to test the monkey pee and Mulder goes to Baruby's house and breaks in. Mm-hmm. So, Scully is at the lab and uh, it's a bacteria specimen, but it's unlike any bacteria specimen that the analyst has ever seen before. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, I think it just... Does, it, does she explain any more at that point or does it... Is there something to do with chromosomes in it or something like that? Or no. Or extra two? Or well, no, no that, that comes a little bit later. But, it's, but, yeah, basically, the expert gets a little bit excited because, as you say, she says it's bacteria, not like any seen. Um, but while, while they're doing that, Mulder has gone to Dr Baruby's house. Yes. And uh, he calls Danny, like you said. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a car pulls up outside, and, the, and the, it's the guy who last visited Baruby, and he has a, a very covert listening device in his hand. Uh-huh. It's like almost like a large satellite. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Pointed it's di- the most inconspicuous bugging device apparatus <laughs> that you've ever seen in your life. 
Um, and it kind of points it straight through the window at Mulder, who <laughs> is oblivious to this fact. When um, the, the the other doctor, is it Sakari? Sakari. Calls up. Yeah. Yep. Mm. And tells him that he needs help. Mm. And Mulder pretends to be Baruby. Yeah. And it's, it's uh, the green-blooded man kind of passes out. And it's a carry. How annoying is this guy who comes oh. and picks up the phone? It's like, dude, at least take the time to find out who it is he's speaking to. He could have been it, on like the great. phone. He could have been on the phone calling an ambulance. It's you know? a great conversation. Like, tell me where you are. I can't. I'm going to have to hang up and uh, phone an ambulance. But can you just tell me where you are? No. I really don't have the time to tell you where I am. I need to hang up. It's like, that could have been a medical team, you know, that he was on the phone to, because that would be the first thing I'd think. Look at the state of this Mm. guy. He's probably just phoned um, a doctor, but he's flaking out. I'll tell him where he is. So it's like, you've got Mulder shouting, tell me where he is. The first thing I would think is, oh, right, I'll tell him where he is so he can come and help. Yeah. So bizarre. It's one of those little moments that just sent to frustrate you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then the phone rings again, and it's Danny who tells Mulder about Zeus storage. Mm-hmm. Storage of the gods. Yeah. So I'm sure there's some kind of thing there about Zeus, but we won't really dig into that too much. <laughs> uh, the paramedics <laughs> try CPR on uh, Sakari. Uh, they pierce his body with something, and they seem to release a gas that has a, a, a not very nice effect on them. Mm. This is this, be, main, this is actually uh, I, I, when I first watched this through the the, the X Files and I got into the second season, this like this gas comes into play quite a lot throughout the series. It's a very specific trait of um, of the aliens, a particular breed of aliens that become very prominent throughout the series, and I'd completely forgotten that it actually started here in the Earl of Meyer flask. I always thought it was in a two-parter that we get called Colony and Endgame. Um, but, yeah, so pay attention to that because it, it will come back in quite a big way. Okie dokie. Um, so the, the paramedics come out of the, the ambulance trying to get away, get some fresh air. The man gets up and just generally runs away. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly yeah. he seems perfectly fine. That, that, that pierced thing in the gas release seems to have made him a little bit better. Mm. Um, then we jump back to Scully who says it's a, a viral bacteria including plant cells and, and that it's ancient that this specimen she's been testing um, yeah, that is what she yeah. Says. My, my, my notes just say Scully says it's really 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 old so yeah because she she, she uh, alludes to the possibility that it may be older than humanity itself on the planet. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So, we're into a really fun scene where it's Zeus storage. Mulder walks down a very spooky hallway with spooky music playing that's mm-hmm. very, very effective. And the vertigo technique that Alfred Hitchcock developed for the film Vertigo. Uh, I, yeah. I always love it when they find a... A reason to use it in, well, in anything really. It's it's quite a disorientating effect to use in camera. Mm-hmm. Um, and inside this storage container are people in tanks, and it's really just weird, mm-hmm. weird setup. They're all hooked to like e- ECG machines. They've got like heart rates and things like that. One moves. Yeah. At one point, it's just kind of freaky. Yeah. Because like, it's like it's breathing it? underwater. Yeah, you're like, this is weird, this is really weird. It's a really iconic image, it kind of sticks out. Mm. They have the really sort of strange angles in this place. It just looks unique. Mm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I really like that scene. I, I, didn't, I didn't know what we were going to find inside that storage container and I was not even close to guessing what <laughs> it was. It was terrific. Yeah, it, it, it really starts you off with a lot of questions, doesn't it? I mean, X-Files is really famous for setting up a load of questions and then leaving you hanging. Um, yeah. And you kind of wonder when you're when you're ever going to get them answered. But it, it certainly does that here. Like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, big style. 
So we have next up we have Scully kind of sleeping on a couch, mm. and the doctor wakes her up. Mm. Uh, this sample uh, from the bacteria basically is five to six nuclear tides, which um, the human body only has one to four or yeah. something like that. They've discovered yeah. a fifth and sixth in this sample. Yeah. So the doctor's super excited. Scully's starting to you can see her head starting to tick over. Mm-hmm. You know, and tally things up. Things are, are seemingly she can't explain them. Yeah, and then the and then the uh, the doctor tells her that the virus is extraterrestrial in origin. Yes. Yeah, and this is this is putting. I, I like this scene, and it's it could be seen as just a throwaway scene, but I like it because it places Scully in her natural environment. Mm. Scientific yeah. answers, yeah. facts. One direction or another, there's no duality to it, mm-hmm. and she has an expert who she trusts, telling her factually that this is extraterrestrial in origin. Yeah, and she can't dispute that with swamp gas <laughs> or <laughs> any other wacky reason that she mm-hmm. can come up with. You know, yeah. it's it's in her playground. Yeah, um, which, which which I really liked as well. Mm. It put it put Scully in a position that she's never really been in before. Um, yes, so. So Mulder phone rings and it's Scully who says that this is extraterrestrial. Well, well before that we've got um, Mulder, oh, yes, yes. Mulder gets chased off from zoo storage. Or does he? Well, that's the thing, isn't it? These, these men are professionals, Agent Mulder. If you'd been chased, we wouldn't be talking right now. Um, so. and, and it, it does feel that way, like it... They kind of pincer him, mm. and he runs, and, and yeah. you never see anybody chasing him, but you see him moving and, and ducking over things and jumping mm. over things, and and then there's just nobody behind him, and that's when they say he clicked. You know, they weren't after Mulder yeah. at all. They just wanted to scare him off, get rid of him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we um, we have Mulder's phone ringing, and it's Scully who says that the, the sample is extraterrestrial in origin. So Mulder's just like Scully, forget that. <laughs> I know. <I've> got... <laughs> it's like, it's like who cares? I've got something even better. The thing is, the weight of that moment for Scully that that should hit Mulder pretty hard. He's, he's mm. this partner who, for the whole of this season. Has has come up with anything to to you know a, a, any other explanation besides extraterrestrial? The fact that she's now standing here on the phone telling him Mulder, this is extraterrestrial, and he doesn't even he doesn't even blink. He's just like, yeah, come and see what I've found. Yeah. And it's like, dude, savor this moment, please. Mm-hmm. And it's like you kind of feel like actually if he if he hadn't of brought her over to see these tanks that we're going to find out have, have now been cleaned up and are no, no longer there. Mm-hmm. Just leaving her with that, with what she's found, with what she's discovered, would be enough. But by dragging her into all this other stuff in which, you know, there's there's, there's some truth, some things are seen, some things aren't, it becomes so confusing that you feel like that will be the thing that actually makes her put her back up against the wall, climb into a shell, and just ignore the one irrefutable piece of evidence that she's actually just found, just discovered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but when you break it down to just, yeah, forget that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Mulder takes Scully to the storage and before they go in, Scully apologises for earlier. Mm. You know, yeah. she, she can't rationalise what she's seen uh, last night. And, and it's just a, a moment, just a, a quiet moment just to go, Mulder, you know, before we even go in here, you were right. Mm. It's just a, a nice little point. Yeah. You know, she she's, shows you that she's got a wee bit of prag, uh, pragmatism about herself, mm. being able to just to go, like, you know what, I was wrong, I was wrong, I'm going to tell this man. Yeah. It's, it's an important character trait it's an important quality to have in a in a character who you who you're going to trust if you're going to put your trust in someone you need to know that actually they don't just spout off things because they want to disagree with you 
you know, they they, they they believe in what they're doing. They believe in what they're mm-hmm. saying. Um, so when when they when they do come unstuck, when they do realise that they're wrong, seeing that they can say that uh, makes you trust them a lot more. So they go into the room, and it is empty, completely clean. It's been wiped clean of all evidence of any funny goings on, with the exception of Deep Throat. Yeah. And this is <clears throat> this is the one that bugs me because this is a secret location that Mulder's just recently found out about. The mm-hmm. government have obviously found out, or somebody's found out about it and cleaned it out. Mm-hmm. Um, you would imagine that somebody's possibly watching this. Yeah. To, to, and 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 Deep Throat turns up there along with the two FBI agents. It just seems a little bit a little odd. Well, I don't know because. <clears throat> one, because Deep Throat works for this organisation, you just he he could have a reason for being there. Um, he, you know, he could have very well been the person in charge of the cleanup operation. And two, the fact that everything is now gone means that there isn't really any real reason for people to to be watching it. Um, but like well, I say, the, I I I, I mo- the, 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 the other thing that bugs me here. As his forthcoming with information. Well, he, he, he no. never. Well, he explains that though, doesn't he? Um, <clears throat> because, uh, like, <clears throat> he he says they're standing in the room where the first alien human hybrid was created, and Deep Throat tells them everything everything now, because there's no longer any evidence. No one would believe them. So. <clears throat> This is Deep Throat's problem. This is this is the 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 rock, the place between the rock and a hard place that he finds himself. Which is that if he gives Mulder and Scully too much, then it becomes very evident that he's the one who gave it to them. Uh, whereas if you give Mulder a, a link like the one at the beginning, which he gives to him, and let him follow the clues himself. That if Mulder's getting there under his own steam, it can't be traced back to him. Um, so <clears throat> telling this stuff to them now, when they actually have no evidence, when they can't bring it to light, it doesn't matter because it, it won't get traced back to Deep Throat because they're not going to go forward with it because no one's going to believe them. If they've not got any evidence, who's going to believe them? Whereas if they had the evidence... You know, if, if the evidence was there and they suddenly stumbled upon it, the, the people that Deep Throat works for would be like, how did they just stumble on that? We must have a leak. But the evidence was there and Mulder did just stumble across it. Yeah, but... <laughs> like, did, he, But he didn't just stumble across it, did he? Because the guy who was bugging Mulder... You know, was listening in on Mulder's conversation at Baruby's house. He he leaves after Sakari's on the phone. He leaves before Danny makes his. I phone know, call. but there's still enough of a link there to because Sakari know Sakari knows where that place is. He he was in it. He was experimented on in that place. So the very fact that Mulder is speaking to him on the phone. And that the fact that he doesn't stay around to, to listen to the rest of that conversation only serves to help in that in that regard because <clears throat> Sakar could have t- told him any, anything. He could have told him about that place. Um, okay. Does he not listen for the? Does he not sit there for the fill of the Sakari conversation? I don't. And then, then he leaves. I don't know. I, I, I can't remember. But either way, the fact of the matter is, Mulder has now had contact with this guy. So there's a link there as to how Mulder could have found this place, as to how he could have found zoo storage. I mean, we see that actually he does find zoo storage by using by getting a number from Barubi's um, <clears throat> phone book, his his personal book thing. So, <clears throat> so yeah, it, it, this actually doesn't bother me because w- w- when I watched this scene, when Mul- when Deep Throat started splurging all this information. I, like you, was bothered by it. I was like, hang on, back up. This information could have been pretty pertinent earlier on, thank you very much. But then when Deep Throat explains why he's giving it now, because Scully asks that, Scully says, what, 
all right, why are you giving us all this now? You know, what, what, why now? And so, I, so I, I'm satisfied with the answer that Deep Throat gives to that, which is that actually giving you too much when, when there's no kind of evidence trail as to how, how you would have got to there on your own steam points back to me in too much of a big way. Whereas if I give you a little clue, something that naturally as investigators you might kind of look into, if that leads you to where I want you to go, then it's not going to point back to me because there is a trail. There is a, there is a, a logical link that, that would look like you have naturally found this yourself. And that's Deep Throat's problem. That's why he always gives them all to these really tiny little pieces hoping that it's going to lead him to the big piece without giving him away um, I, mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm completely <coughs> buying what you're selling Brian mm -hmm. um, but let's, let's go back to what the information that, some, uh, that, that Deep Throat comes out with that they were having gene therapy they were mixing human DNA with alien DNA to cure terminal illnesses so after this uh, information kind of dump. Scully says she's going back to the lab to get the evidence and mm -hmm. Mulder's going to find the missing doctor. Yeah. 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 So Scully gets to the lab to find out that the phew, shocker, that the doctor has died along with her family in a terrible accident. Mm. And you have this feeling of the conspiracy starting to close round about these two. Yeah, yeah, big time. I mean, I mean one of the the biggest pieces of information, I guess, that we got from Deep Throat was about that room being the place where the first alien-human hybrid was born. That's that's really the crux of the whole conspiracy story arc that runs through the next ten years of X-Files, is this alien-human hybrid project. What's it all about? What's the end game for it? Why are we even doing it? Um, so, yeah, so... To have that just kind of dumped on us, mm. it's no wonder that this doctor had a accident. Um, yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like you say, it's very much in connotations. We know what's happened to the doctor. There's not mm. been an accident. There's yeah. Been yeah, somebody just took her out of the game, pretty much. It all so it all feels been... like I, I mean I don't know about you, but to me th this episode in particular feels very much like one of those kind of. 1970s political thrillers or you know something like Francis Ford Coppola's The Conversation or All the President's Men or something like that it does very much have that feel to it yeah yeah T time is running out and the bad guys are closing in mm. um, I, I agree with you 100% there so Mulder goes to Baruby's home which is pretty much trashed uh, he hears a noise in the attic and when he goes up there he finds Dr Sakari who attacks Mulder mm. But then it's very quickly shot in the back. Yeah. Mulder passes out. <clears throat> and when he wakes up, he's kind of tied up and his eyes are all kind of swollen. Is that to do with uh, the blood or gas from the yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I thought that. And three men are just in the background, generally up to no good. Mm. One of them has been the guy that's been through the full episode from the news report onwards. Yeah. So Scully goes to see Mulder who is missing, so she goes to his home, he's not there, she's obviously not heard from him for a while, um, and Deep Throat tells her that these guys won't kill him, um, because he's become too high profile, uh, which um, you, you might question the validity of that statement if it wasn't for previous episodes such as Fallen Angel, in which we got the character of Max, in which he did know Mulder, he knew who Mulder was, um, you know. So, so this isn't something that's just been brought in now. We, mm -hmm. Amongst UFO circles, these conspiracy nuts, Mulder is actually quite high profile. So, yeah. Um, now, this is also where Deep Throat tells her that there is that he can get into some place where they can find alien evidence that they could trade mm. for Mulder. Yeah. So you have this idea that, that they're kind of almost warring factions within the government because I assume that these other guys are government as well. Mm. And you know Deep Throat is government and he can get access to where this alien artefact is. Mm. So it just makes you kind of wonder what kind of other 
covert operations are going on out there. The government obviously aren't working together on this. Yeah, there's, there's, there's definitely, it's definitely opposing sides at play here. Um, but yeah. it's, it's hard to make out who who's on whose side. Because like you, the, the, the place where Scully is about to go and retrieve this this artefact, this alien... Well, yeah, this alien, really. It looks like an alien fetus. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Uh, it, it's not exactly clear as to who is running this place, who it belongs to. Um, yeah. it's, it's just a high containment facility. Mm. Um, so Scully goes there, enters and she clears security and she decides to, to go to cryology and passes more security. Um, where she finally pulls out this baby alien, like you said. Mm. And finally, Scully is handling the truth. Yeah, she's face to face with it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> she's got it in her handbag, like one of those little rat dogs. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, but it's, it's just, it's such an iconic image as well for, for, for the X Files. This, this image, this, that shot of, of Scully just looking straight at this thing. Yeah, um, it's like how how do you how do you deny anything after this point? That's the yeah. question. Yeah, that this is what I'm really interested about because I don't remember too much of what comes next. So I'd be curious in season two to see if Scully goes back to her usual sort of argumentative self or whether the the truth has fundamentally shook her morals. Mm. Don't give me any spoilers here, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to our rendezvous on a bridge at night. Scully has the evidence and Deep Throat wants to take it off her, but she doesn't trust him. And, and to be fair, neither do I still. I still don't trust him. No, no, no. Uh, she, she eventually, eventually hands it over to him. And she watches as Deep Throat goes up to meet the guys and gets shot, mm. um, which I wasn't expecting at all. Right, really? <sighs> yeah, wasn't expecting it. So you, you, don't, you didn't remember that, did you not? Nope. Okay. No. Nope. <clears throat> yeah, and, and the question is how much of Deep Throat's decision to take that parcel himself was geared towards protecting Scully? Because you, you kind of feel, I don't know about you, but I, I feel like Deep Throat knew what he was walking into there. I feel like he 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 just about knew his time was up um, <clears throat> and that uh, by forcing Scully to give him that parcel so that he could take it, he was protecting her somehow. No, I just, this, I thought it's just occurred to me that he said that they won't kill Mulder because he's mm -hmm. too high profile. Mm -hmm. Does Scully come under that? If Scully had taken the alien to the van, would she have been okay? Would she not have been shot? Well, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, because she's kind of part and parcel with Mulder. Just mm -hmm. a, a curiosity. Um, I'm wondering if that'll be answered in later season or not no so where do we go from there we, we, we turn on to Washington DC 13 days later mm. Scully walks at night the phone rings or Scully sorry Scully wakes at night and the phone rings it's Mulder who tells her that the X-Files has been shutting down and he seems quite r resigned and downbeat and, mm. and th this is a strange point Scully seems to want to fight for it yeah yeah and 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 Mulder says she, she asks Mulder what are you going to do and he's like I'm going to fight and that really <laughs> monotone that just seems yeah. like that it seems like he's going to fight on the motions but the kind of effort has left him at the moment mm. yeah which is a kind of somber ending it is um, and and uh, let's not forget Deep Throat's last words as well trust no one yeah which is pretty much going to become. Yeah, something to live by uh, as as the series goes on. Uh, yeah, no. that's it. That that wraps and, up and the season. We have, well, we have the smoky man putting the evidence in oh, the large of warehouse. Yes, so we which we've... mimics the pilot episode mm, perfectly. Yeah. almost bookends it. Yeah, really does. Yep, and that and that is it. And we are left <clears throat> with a lot of questions for season two. <laughs> And, and I'm still struggling to find out if we get any answers at the end of that season. It, it mm. was quite good. Um, yeah. I tell you what, I'll, I'll wrap this up quickly. Go on. I thought this was an excellent episode. Um, yeah. And not just 
for the main reasons that I think it's an important episode because I think it's very Scully centric. Even though she's not in it much, it's all about her having her eyes opened and mm. discovering that things aren't as she thought they were. You know, there is no explanation. She's given factual information that she cannot possibly argue against it. And she has to be pragmatic and realise that, you know what, Mulder has been right 100% of the time. Um, it's got some stunning visuals that the fish tank things with the guys and it's great the car chase at the start is excellent the men in black are really fun I just had a lot of fun with this episode it is really interesting it, it's everything good about the X-Files mm, yeah yeah, um, and it's a great finale and I gave it 5 out of 5 yeah I <clears throat> I won't go on too much because you've pretty much just said it all it, it is a spectacular episode um the government conspiracy stuff, the alien arc that kind of goes on throughout the rest of the series really owes a huge debt to this episode because this is when, as I say, after this, there was no going back. They were tied to this story, tied to these elements that they set up here. Uh, a lot of what happens in this episode is going to come back in a big way throughout the series on many occasions. Uh, so, yeah brilliant episode the the only real criticism i have of it is that dude who 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 answered the phone and then decided to hang up rather than uh <laughs> trying to find out who was on the other end of the line um but when, when that's your only criticism of an episode then yeah you've got something quite special um five out of five from me absolutely all the way brilliant so there we have it season one done <clears throat> fantastic 24 episodes in uh, next episode is going to be something a little bit different it's where we're just going to recap season one ever so slightly with our our top five favorite episodes of this season and our bottom five episodes ones that if we possibly could we would jettison in the series um, yeah we're, we're been... also going we're also going to be hearing from you guys out there uh, i have been putting questions out on a few of the x-files fan facebook pages uh and and we got quite a good response actually uh so i've, I've been asking what your favorite episodes and least favorite episodes are so we'll hear from those as well oh fantastic <coughs> love a bit of audience participation so we'll see you next time on the x-files revisited <laughs>